Plugging loopholes to check tax evasion appears to be the solution for the government. For it to increase revenue and bolster its finances. Welcome to this special report on taxation policy. I'm Amritan Shurai and you're watching Raj Sabha TV. The Direct Tax Code Bill attempted to simplify tax laws so that it was easier to comply with. It also sought to widen tax labs and plug loopholes for tax evasion. In order to plug loopholes of tax evasion, the bill introduced a concept of general anti-avoidance rules, GAR, which gave immense power to the tax assessment officer. Corruption is already too high in the tax department, we are aware. It is very important for the government to ensure that the uh, touch between the SSE and the government is almost completely taken away. Everything happens electronically. There is no need to have personalized assessments. There is no need to have refunds for purposes of people going to the tax department. In fact, tax department SSE interface has to be nil except in case of appeals if it is necessary. That also should be ha happening on a public fora. That will create a lot of betterment. The Direct Taxes Code sought to introduce the General Anti-Avoidance Rules, GAR, for the first time to prevent revenue leakages. Under this, the tax officer was to be authorized to consider an entry as tax avoidance. Once he raised a question, the burden to prove that it is not tax avoidance will be of the taxpayer. This would have enormously empowered the assessing officer and could lead to an adversarial situation. The government has indicated that a non-adversarial policy will be brought in. GAR gives a power to a revenue official wherein he can interpret any agreement the way he wants. As regards the bigger players are concerned, the government has come out with many legislation. And the biggest legislation in the due course of time will be GAR. Although the GAR has not been properly drafted, although incorporated in the Income Tax Act by the previous government, but it requires some, just some amendments, some simplification, something which is irritating factor. Tax terrorism is more problem rather than adversarial because uh, tax uh, governance has been retrospective which cannot and should not be there. On the other hand, uh, transfer pricing assessments have been very high pitched primarily based on non-professional considerations and many times stretching the law beyond the original intention of the government itself by the concerned officials. The most important will be that the official's approach is positive and they see SSE as a friend of the government rather than somebody else or an enemy or an alien and the SSE feel that the government is fair. The tax labs under the earlier proposal was to widen it further to benefit the individual taxpayer. Let's take a look at the existing slabs and the recommendation of the Parliamentary Standing Committee. According to current slabs, individuals don't need to pay any tax if their income is 2 lakh rupees or less. But they need to pay 10% tax on income between 2 lakh rupees and 5 lakh rupees. 20% tax is levied on income tax between 5 lakh rupees and 10 lakh rupees and 30% tax is levied on income above 10 lakh rupees. The earlier Parliamentary Standing Committee has recommended further widening of tax slabs. According to their recommendations, personal income of over 3 lakh rupees up to 10 lakh rupees should be taxed at 10%. Income over 10 lakh rupees up to 20 lakh rupees should be taxed at 20% and income over 20 lakh rupees should be taxed at 30%. Tax slabs, I will not say any expectations, major expectations we don't have. Marginal increase will come, 
because the government is already very tight about their economic uh, situation. I think what is important for the government to look at is uh, some kind of a corporate, uh, like corporate do debt restructuring, corporate government need to do debt restructuring because government is in a very heavy uh, debt burden and 99% of the tax collection goes towards repayment or interest charges which they pay on debt. Some expectation is there because populate, populate measures will be ATC, slab rate, ATD for general public at all. Not for the businessman as a whole. Yeah. But of course, an uh, ordinary man is always thinking, what is the slab rate? Yes. So according to me, it's going to be minimum 2 lakh 50,000. Mm -hmm. May up, go up to 3 lakh. But don't expect any change in the further slab. There was also a proposal to add all perks enjoyed by a taxpayer to income for the purpose of tax calculation. In other words, allowances like leave travel, furnishing, entertainment expenses, conveyance, medical etc. are to be added to income. The UPA government's proposal for the tax treatment of post-retirement benefits was very upsetting. They had proposed that money saved in specified instruments like PPF and PF for getting tax exemption would be taxable when they are withdrawn. In order to stop revenue losses to the government, the UPA's direct tax code policy proposed separate tax computation of separate units of one big business. According to the proposals, if there is a big bank, then it may have to file separate computation for different branches. In the present system, one computation of the entire banking business is required. According to the proposed direct tax code, separate computation of income of different units of the same business will be required if businesses are different. Businesses will be considered to be different and separate if the physical location of two units of the same business are separate. Different raw materials are used or different products are produced in different units and separate books of accounts are maintainable or are capable of being maintained. I think sir, that the way the direct tax code was done it was a handy work of people who wanted to make tax law more and more complex. And I think tax law has to be very simple, understandable. One very important thing which I like to add here is that the interpretation basis of the tax law, like in US, is based on uh, not on the very fine print of what is written in the law, but what is actually intended. That means the SSE as well as the government actually go based on intentions rather than the letters. The proposed direct tax code sought to make major changes in wealth tax calculation and rates. The threshold limit for wealth tax was to be raised to 1 crore rupees from the present 30 lakh rupees and the tax rate was to be 1%. For the purpose of levy of wealth tax, a taxable asset was to include deposits in banks located outside India in case of individual and unreported bank deposits in case of others. This was a specific measure to detect black money. The proposals included not to impose wealth tax on residential houses, commercial premises and immovable property which is rented out. But urban land and farmhouses located within 25 kilometers of any municipal or cantonment board were to be included while computing the tax liability is a law which actually wealth tax as a law is actually not required by our country because most of the items are in any case exempted there is hardly any collection which is being done on wealth tax and this cost of collection is much higher than the collection what it is like gift tax act was done away with similarly i think wealth tax also has to be done away with gift tax has already come through section 56 in an indirect manner but i think that's quite acceptable to people why 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 have wealth tax at all 
let us what is thousand crore it is irritating factor why go for a wealth tax at all let me tell you it is it is for check and balances if we do not have that wealth tax you will not come to know the accumulation of wealth by the people the source of the wealth also at least when you file a return or when you are caught and you file a return you will have to give the source of the uh, uh, investment in the uh, those assets wealth tax uh, is not contributing anything to the kitty it's a pity very petty amount you can say the proposed tax code prescribes stiff penalties and prosecution for non compliance with the tax laws it proposes that every tax offence under the code will be punishable by both imprisonment and fine apart from defaulters the direct tax code proposes to punish tax consultants who help in tax evasion it's time for us to enter into a break when we come back we will tell you about the indirect tax policy the goods and services tax gst Welcome back. The GST seeks to replace several taxes being levied by state governments and central governments separately. The attempt is to create one big common market for goods and services. The value added tax VAT helps reduce the burden of multiple taxation to a great extent. but duality at various levels remain as taxes like central tax customs duty luxury tax entertainment tax service tax are not part of vat in order to create a uniform national market for goods and services the government proposes the goods and services tax I think GST is very important to ensure that there is no cascading effect of uh, the taxes on one hand and then we are able to collect taxes from everybody possible once there is GST framework then people will like to take bills rather than not like to take bills because they get advantage of taking a bill and it will be possible for the government to actually monitor that almost tax compliance goes to at least 90% level retailers are not paying the taxes because the person those who are selling those goods they say if you buy a good on a bill you need to pay say 10% 12% 12 12.5% whatever may be the rate and if you do not buy a good then you don't have to pay that 12% and that 12% is a very big in 100 rupees 12 rupees is a big difference but in gst this will not happen because anybody who is coming in the uh, you can say chain will be required to pay only on his profit state government is thinking they will incur losses and who will bear the losses although the central government is promising that if at all there are losses we will compensate for those losses but let me tell you modi government is also very serious earlier government also was serious about that but all trade industry wants gst because there are so many laws and they become so complicated and compliance becomes so heavy so they want it the different type of taxes may be merged into one but yes we are not going to have one gst we are going to have dual gst central gst state gst The present indirect tax law empowers the parliament to make laws on manufacture of goods and provision of services and it is the state legislature which makes laws on taxing the sale and purchase of goods within the state. The policy change will require a constitutional amendment to delete several taxes in union and state list 
which provides for levy of tax on services and all these taxes will be brought under GST. The law provides for parliament and state legislature to make laws on GST with a clause preventing center from overriding any law made by the state. But legislation on interstate trade matter and taxes on imports will fall only in the purview of the center. Test of the whole thing will be that the GST rate has to be kept at the lowest possible, less than uh, 12%, including central and the state government. GST has to be one uh, uh, tax, not separate for central and the state government. I think sharing between the central and the state can be a specific percentage on the same uh, tax percentage. And ultimately, one very important thing, GST need to be structured based on value addition. What is the point of charging separate tax is it, uh, on goods, separate tax on service when it is same? And then you are giving input credit for that also to have two pieces of legislation for the same type of a thing. Two. Another problem we have is we have a federal type of a government where we have two tier government. One, of course, is the central government, another is the state government. State government is looking for their own revenue, central government is looking for their own revenue. The proposed policy creates a GST council which will be headed by Union Finance Minister. This council will be empowered to recommend on taxes, cess and surcharges levied by centre, state and local bodies to be brought under GST regime. The council will also decide the goods and services that may be exempted and fix GST rates. The council will be expected to come into effect within 60 days of it becoming a law. The GST policy sets up a dispute settlement authority headed by a Supreme Court judge. The authority is expected to adjudicate matters that arise out of conflict between the state and the centre. Matters of revenue is a sensitive subject for the state government as the revenue earned determine the expenditure pattern of the elected government. In a situation where there is a conflict of interest between the state government and the central government, the proposal is to set up a dispute resolution authority. The proposal sets up a GST dispute settlement authority. The authority will be empowered to adjudicate disputes of the central and state governments if it results in any loss in revenue or affects the harmonized structure of the tax. The authority is likely to have three members including a chairman who has been a former judge of Supreme Court or has been a chief justice of High Court normal dispute. Then it will go to commissioner sale tax. If the party wins, the government can go to tribunal. If again party wins, then government can go to high court, tribunal, to high court, then to supreme court. It takes 20 years and the uh, burden on the next exchequer in terms of maintaining the records and then reversal direction because people, those who have win a particular type of the case, they will series of litigation they will also plan in their way so dispute resolution will be dependent upon a particular case on a particular you can say circumstances i think that the way the gst policy has been structured by the current uh, high powered committee uh, there is a very big defect because the states will never accept this kind of a proposal what i am suggesting is that there is no dispute requirement because once the concerned state is actually administering uh, a particular law, then the question of dispute between the centre and the state norm in normal course will not really arise. In case there is a dispute, I think courts are the best forum rather than any other committee. The proposed law seeks to keep petroleum crude, high-speed diesel, petrol, natural gas, aviation turbine, fuel, alcohol out from the GST regime. This means the state will have the power to impose tax on these items, but tobacco, and its products are included in GST, but the central government can impose excise duty on them. I think petroleum products 
uh, and tobacco has to be kept away from GST. There is no option actually because you can't give credit for some certain items which are consumption based. Petroleum is something which is used for industrial purposes also. I think one can one can live with this this kind of exception. But what is important is that all the states charge the same GST rate, not differential. The GST administration should be given to the states so that they have confidence on collection and whatever they collect, whatever they refund, it is shared between the center and the state automatically through the uh, a very transparent electronic system. Even for petrol also it is the same thing because we want to control the uses. If we have a heavy taxation, probably people will use less. Probably people will use less and we will have a control on that point of view. And let me tell you, even now the VAT, the, the, this, the petrol and uh, tobacco does not come under VAT. It is also part of the VAT, no doubt, I am not denying, but the rate is different. Yeah. All the VAT rate is only 1%, 4%, 12.5%, yeah. but that is a kept separate discretion given left to the state governments state government. to impose their own rate. Maybe they may increase beyond 20%. The proposed law creates a structure through which the GST Council, an executive body, recommends tax rates and judicial body, GST Dispute Settlement Authority, decides tax rates in case of disputes. All the district councils will also be empowered to levy taxes on entertainment and amusement. Thank you for watching this special report. We'll be back with a new issue and a new report. Keep watching Raj Sabha TV.